This is a map of South Dakota. I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, those white counties represent counties that have populations less than 3,000. And I would tell you that there are six of those counties that are under 1,500. So it gives you a little bit of an idea about, I don't know how Dr. Bob from the Census Bureau defined rural yesterday, but I can show you um, a little bit of what I consider certainly rural. When we started talking about this, to June of 2003, I came to the foundation. I'm a recovering banker. So I came to the foundation and, and never been in the foundation world or nonprofit world at all. And we sat down and had a conversation. One thing I had done in a previous career is you always set goals. So there were three or four things that were constant when I came to work in the foundation world um, at the South Dakota Community Foundation. Number one, we were just slightly under $30 million in assets, which I know we're not supposed to talk about measuring ourselves in assets anymore, but tell that to your board and let me know how that goes. So, so we were under $30 million in assets. We were also 16 years old, so over that period of time we've been serving the state of South, the entire state of South Dakota with a few pockets accepted, but, uh, but really um, had, had done some good work and we're kind of getting our feet on the ground. And the third thing that was somewhat constant is I had a full head of hair. So that goes back just a few years of what working in the foundation world can do for you. We had, we had to set some goals, there was no question, so I sat down with our board of directors, 24 people from across the state, and said, where, where do we want this foundation to go? What do we want it to look like? We're $29.7 million in assets today, we've got a relatively small staff, where do we want to be? And they said, well, let's talk about assets first. We, of course, talked about grant making and other things, but we would like to see this organization be $50 million by 2010. This was June of 2003. And I started doing the math and thought, we can do that. So by the end of 2004, when we hit $50 million, I figured I had the next five years off. And we could just relax. And they said, no, you misunderstood. We said we wanted to be $100 million by 2010. And I remembered right then and there that I still worked for a board of directors and we needed to get some things done. So when we talked about a $100 million number for a foundation in a, in a state like South Dakota, the first question is, what's out there? Is that even possible? Can you set a goal of 100 million if there's only 98 million to actually go after? So we turned it on, and, and we were introduced to the transfer of wealth concept. Stay, you know, that really we needed a we needed a roadmap, if you will, of where we could go as an organization. And it became important to see what was out there. So our number, our magic number, you saw 75 trillion dollars. Our magic number in South Dakota, probably not that impressive to many of you, but it's $38 billion. It was 38 to 44 billion. Being a somewhat conservative state, we decided to go with the 38 billion number. And then we said, let's see if we can't capture 5% of that. Once again, using the lead of Jeff at the Nebraska Community Foundation and others. So we said, roughly, can we find, can we capture over the next 50 years, $2 billion, roughly? Well, you might say, that's a lot of money to go out and get, you know, that's not a lot of money, excuse me, to go out and, and get in South Dakota. Our state budget is $3 billion. That gives you just a little bit of an idea. We've got a state budget of, of, two, of $3 billion. So over 50 years, $2 billion is pretty substantial. So we got board buy-in. When we presented this data, can we, you know, we need to buy in. This, this I need, as, a, as your staff leader, we need buy-in. The board said yes. Then we scrambled to find some partners because, you know, we weren't very big at the time and the price tag to do this, which I will now tell you, write the check. It's the best check you'll ever write. I'm not doing a commercial for Don, but I sort of am. Uh, it, we found partners. We found a local community foundation right here in the room, the Watertown Community Foundation. We found several other, uh, a small private Catholic college foundation wanted in. Um, one other community foundation, and then Citigroup, of all people, that, uh, that utilize South Dakota's wonderful usury laws to make billions of dollars across the world. So we, uh, we engaged them in this process as well. The result was data, information that we can use, that we can go out on a statewide level. The partners can use at the local level. But we had to break it down. So for us, when you look at this map, it came down to county by county numbers. We, we took the raw data, which they do a great job with, and then asked them, can you give us county by county numbers? Can you tell us where counties will be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30, 40, and 50? 
So we did that, and the numbers came back. And and like I said, as a as a former banker, I I couldn't get out of my seat fast enough to get into the car and literally go tell this story. So we announced it statewide through public broadcasting, which so 17 people heard about. It. I mean, so. Uh, and none, none of the state legislators, because they all want to cut public broadcasting. But that's another issue for another time. So we, we announced this public broadcasting, and then through the daily newspapers in South Dakota, which there aren't very many, but the dailies took this story, and many of them ran front page articles, very localized, but still it got the word off to literally thousands of people in a state of only 800,000 people. So that's how the communication strategy started. Then the phone starts ringing, and literally, Development corporations, county commissions, city councils, the local foundation boards, hospital foundations, school foundations. I recall between the time we had this done and within six months, I did 80 public presentations on transfer of wealth in the state of South Dakota. And since have done three times that number. It, it's just unbelievable how much desire, if you will, there is to get this, this information into people's minds locally. So we took off in these counties and you take a look and you say, boy, those counties that don't have a lot of people, you probably don't spend a lot of time there. I would tell you it's exactly the contrary. When you look at transfer of wealth data, you will see that the wealthiest counties in net worth, and I, I would advise you all to never mistake $750,000 houses, which by the way in South Dakota is a mansion, but a $750,000 house with a Hummer and two BMWs in the driveway and a, and a place set in the backyard, never mistake that for net worth. Never. Um, if they didn't get wiped out in 2008, they might during the next fall. But those are people who have, have debt and have payments. Net worth in rural America lies outside of city limits, period. And it lies in equity in either businesses or land, and if your ag land is anything like our ag land, the net worth has literally risen exponentially over the last few years. And there doesn't seem like there's a big, I hope, chance of a bubble in the very near future. So we spend a lot of time, the bottom line is, in those white colored counties, those small counties. And I liken it to a political campaign, not trying to be political, but if you're a one party and you're running in a primary, if you're a Democratic legislator running, in a, running for a primary in your district, you don't spend much time wandering through neighborhoods that are largely Republican. If you do, you're wasting your time. In this deal, I don't go places where the transfer of wealth is going to happen 30 years from now. I go to the places where the transfer of wealth is happening today. Targeted fundraising on a statewide level, if you can imagine that. As a result, um, 2005, we were roughly right at about 48 or 49 million dollars, and today we're 135 million dollars. Not a large foundation, but I said it to Don before. I attribute 60 percent of our growth to utilizing the data that we're given from the transfer of wealth analysis, and then going out and working hard. And I will close with one thing about working hard. It takes the local group of individuals to make this happen. It takes a local group. We administer 64 local community foundations, and then about another 475 or 480 separate family funds, donor advised funds, other things like that for communities across the state. When I go to any one of these communities, and when we spend time there talking about this, literally the group, the planning group that you get together is the key. You get the right people around the table. Anywhere in rural America, I would contend, but I, my experience is only in South Dakota. There are three assets that you have. It's Cabernet, Jack Daniels, or Bud Light. And if you put those three on the table, depending on where you are in our state, with the right group of people around the table, you can identify who has 80% of the assets in that county before the bottles of Bud Light are out. And uh, it has worked wildly successful. It has been wildly successful. It's been very good. And you identify where you go first. I would tell you the big fish are the ones we've gone after first. But as a result, the foundation not only has more than doubled in size, we've increased the number of donors in literally every county that we do business. 
We've increased the frequency of donations in literally every county that we do business. We've increased the number of new donors to the foundation overall. And then we've increased legacy gifts. People that are leaving farm life, they're leaving other assets that they have before they leave it, or probably after, they leave it to their children who have left for, for us it's Minneapolis or Denver or Omaha or Kansas City. They're giving back to the community where they raised their money or that they made their money or their, or their livelihoods were. We've also developed more relationships and more relationships in the end in our, in our world, as you all know, result in more assets, more grant partnerships, and just making more of a difference. All of that, as much as I hate to give that much credit to Don Mack, comes as a result of our transfer of wealth analysis. I cannot wait to have the updated numbers to literally hit the road again for round two, which we will start at the, uh, the end of this year. So thanks, Don.